Serious error. All shortcuts have disappeared. Mine. Screen. Both are blank. Yes, we just do haiku errors. Hey, why not? We almost did that in Captain Kirk style. Mind. Screen. Bones. <laughs> no. No. How was the movie? Oh, it was terrible. That could be our rant 30. Uh, the movie? Yeah. We may have to do a rant 30 and a rant 45, because we have a rant 30 this week. Maybe. Oh, it's so bad. It's yep. just so bad. Today, the first thing I want to do is tell you guys to get the hell away from Skype and head over and check out Jitsi. Is it kind of like a jitney that takes you around town? Uh, no. Not okay. at all. We had jitneys in Miami. I've never seen a jitney anywhere outside Miami. If Unless you have jitneys... It takes you all around the internet for video conferencing. Does that count? No, I don't think it does. It's a jitsi. Yeah. I never wanted to get in the jitney. It looked like it might crash. Would you get in a jitney with a jitsi? It depends on... <laughs> <laughs> so I can jitney jitsi all the way to work? Exactly. So jitsi is a thing that's going to replace Skype, and you want to use it because it's secure, because right now Skype is not secure. Everything that you guys do on Skype, well, it's pretty much recorded and monitored, and et cetera, well, et cetera. It's, it's, okay, we're, we're being a little bit paranoid, I guess, but see, the big thing with Skype a few years ago was it was end-to-end -end encryption. And now, some people notice that when you paste a link into Skype about an hour later, whatever link you paste into Skype, a Microsoft server would hit that. So you and some other computer somewhere was looking at your chat, apparently. That's the inference drawn from that. Well, I mean, it's, it's plain knowledge these days that Microsoft um, uses everything on Skype, and, they, and they'll work with any you know, agency that, that wants the information. They'll give it right to them. It's, that, that is like completely known. So, just a warning about Skype, and a heads up about Jitsi. Bottom line, stay away from Skype, check out Jitsi, and move on. So, uh, somebody in California who, who wants to remain uh, nameless, anyway, he's like a 27-year-old dude. I'm just like all over the place. 27-year-old dude. And he found the limit of the unlimited data on uh, Fios. It's 77 terabytes. But not really. I mean, like, the, the headline's kind of misleading again, as usual, because... He didn't really get in trouble for using 77 terabytes worth of data. He got in trouble for, you know, like running a server from his home. And they said, hey, that violates the terms of service. And then he said, but, you know, you can jump up to our business class. And he said, okay, I'll jump up to your business class. So why is this an article? Why are people talking about this? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it kind of doesn't make sense. There was a study Cisco did a few years ago that said that a lot of the residential people that are chewing up bandwidth are not like evil, nasty pirates, that they're early adopters of technology. They're just watching 900 episodes of Game of Thrones. In yeah. one sitting. Yeah, it turns out that if you watch the entire first season of Game of Thrones from the HBO streaming thing, that's right at 100 gigabytes. Wow. That's and, a lot. Well, but you know, it, like the Time Warner cap or whatever is 250 gigabytes. So that's that's pretty scary that you're that close to it just from watching, you know, 13 episodes or whatever. 77 terabytes. <laughs> He's got this at his house, that gigantic rack right there. So Yahoo picked up Tumblr for $1.1 billion. Now, last year, Tumblr net... Was it net or the gross? No, it was the net was thirteen they million. Had a, they had a net profit of thirteen million dollars. So we're gonna. I'm gonna be nice. I did a little bit of math in my head here. It's um. Let's say that Yahoo fixes it up and you know they've got some better ads going on, and Yahoo makes twenty million per year on Tumblr. It's gonna take them fifty years, and that does not take into account inflation. It's gonna take them fifty years to recoup their one point one billion dollars. Actually, that'd be about fifty one or two years. And a lot of people that pointed this out, Yahoo said that, oh, we're really buying the, the Tumblr infrastructure, that Tumblr has a really... Scalability. Yeah, a really scalable infrastructure, and it's underutilized, and we think that's a technology in and of itself, and so we're going to monetize that and make a whole bunch of money. So, I mean, Marissa Mayer, Mayer does she think that, that her uh, development team cannot build similar infrastructure for less than a billion yeah, that seems to be the, the implication, and maybe that is true because Yahoo has had a huge brain drain. But, you know, in the beginning, Yahoo had one of the first e-commerce solutions, and it was bizarre. It was based on Lisp, and it was a really incredible e-commerce solution. I yes. think it was provably, mathematically provably secure because it was based on Lisp. And they didn't do anything with it, and I don't know why. I cannot understand this decision, and I cannot back up Marissa Mayer because I believe what Yahoo needs to be doing right now, if they have you know $5.4 billion in cash, and now the $1.1 billion has been allocated for this, if they have that much in cash, why are they not out there courting Google-level 
developers? Why are they not building amazing facilities that make the Google type developers want to go over there and work for Yahoo? That's what I would be doing if I was in her shoes, but I guess I'm not the CEO of a multi-billion dollar internet entity. Yeah, I'd be curious to know what the, what game she's playing, what the long-term options are for that, because she's got to be up to something, but I, it's, there's not a clear plan here. Well, well, they also see that the key demographic and one of the main demographics that they're not getting enough of right now, uh, the younger, you know, tech-savvy people, a lot of them are using Tumblr, and they want that demographic. But they're not loyal. And no, also, not loyal. Uh, Word, the WordPress CEO reported that they were importing like 72,000 blogs an hour blog posts an hour or something like that uh, from Tumblr at one point, at like within four or five hours after the announcement. So these this younger audience is not loyal to Tumblr. No, they're like, what the hell? I'm getting the hell away from Tumblr. And, and Yahoo did come out and say like, hey guys, we're not going to censor the porn that's on Tumblr. And they also said they're going to operate it as a separate entity as well. And that's sort of their plan to not, you know, mess it up. But I think she's crazy. <laughs> that laugh, it's all I can think of is her like, <laughs> laugh. <laughs> She's smart, though. She's got to be playing the long game. I just, I don't know what it is. It's driving me crazy because there's not an obvious... Well, I mean, she did work at Google, and they always played the long game, but I... Maybe maybe I'm stupid? I haven't figured it out yet. I mean, I don't have a clue because it's like step one, you know, underpants. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. You know, right now, the underpants, <laughs> that's Tumblr. Hmm. I don't know. I think she might have lost her underpants on Tumblr. <laughs> 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 Here's this is something funny on Business Insider. So they did a study and they found out that most people do not use Windows 8 apps. They get Windows 8 and every day, they'll go, they'll go a day not using any Windows 8 apps. It's like 60% of the people uh, do not open a Windows 8 app well, every the, day. The user experience there, here's one of the most irritating things about Windows 8. You've got an image, you double click on it, and then you get the full screen Metro preview. And then to get back to the desktop, there's not really an easy way to do that. Yeah, yeah, it opens up in, inside the Metro app, and then, you know, you have to go in there and change the default uh, program. After you've changed all your default programs and stuff, it's actually very nice. You, you know, you install something like Start is Back or an alternative uh, to the start screen. Get rid of that. It's okay, but... Yeah, it's, going... very, it's very disruptive going back and forth between Metro apps and desktop apps. <laughs> it is needlessly disruptive. I built Josh Machine inside a fractal box with a fractal power supply and, and a fractal hat. And over there, put a fractal t-shirt on the machine. But um, I put Windows 8 on that thing, and he would, like, we would be chilling in here, you know, and then something would happen, and I'd hear a bunch of cursing come from the side of the room, and I'd look over, and I would see, like, the Metro interface, and he'd be like, how do I get the hell away from this? I was trying to send, what the, it was really funny. Uh, Kim.com's in the news again. This time he's up to semantics with the uh, patent office, the USPTO. He um, applied for a patent back in, was it 19 or 98 or something like that? How long ago was this? Yeah, about 1998-ish. And um, the patent that he applied for was on a two-step authentication method. Like two-factor. Two-factor. Like where someone logs into a website and then it says, hey, we're going to send you a message on your phone or whatever, and you have to, like, authenticate using that message. So he put a patent on that, and, um, you know, he came out and said, hey, there's like a billion of these, uh, you know, patent infringements going on every week from the likes of Google and Twitter and Facebook and a few other companies. And he was like, but you know what, guys? I'm not going to sue you. But I want you guys to help by giving me money to fight the U.S. government. So that's what he's going to do instead of suing them. Well, here's the problem. He may not actually own a patent. It was approved in America, but if you look, the same patent um, shows up from AT&T and a number of other companies. I think even Sony Ericsson has a patent on it. Uh, let me see who else. Nokia, Ericsson, all have similar patents that predate his. Yeah. So... What's he going on about here? I don't even know. And the other thing that's weird about this is that, I mean, in a legitimate court of law, they're going to probably look for specific in implementations, which I hope that's what they do. But his sounds like, it almost sounds like a patent troll case here. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. So Kim.com, dude, I mean, I know you've got like $50 million in legal fees, but is this the best you could come up with by trying to extort these big American internet companies. I think he probably knows that, and he's just doing this. He's just to being get, a patent troll. Just well, I think he's not even trying to be a patent troll because he's not serious about it. He just wants attention. Is that what he's doing? I think so. Is this part of his flamboyance? He woke up and he's like, "No one's looking at me today." Because well, I think RSA, um, you know, one of the big security companies, has yeah. a, a patent on the two-factor authentication. That's really, it's a really comprehensive patent that probably predates a lot of the other, you know, AT and T and Xerox patents. Yeah, RSA's uh, Secure ID. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he may have a patent on a specific implementation 
other than Secure ID, but you know, these companies have a lot of wiggle room with that. That type of encryption was probably invented in the 60s. Yeah, and then wouldn't that only protect that one implementation in an ideal society? I would think that somebody that is going to have a patent on this is probably going to have a PhD in mathematics, because I would expect somebody to, to, you know, that would hold a patent on this to mathematically really understand and get the mechanism that they've, that they've patented. And that's not happened here, so I don't think it's valid. Speaking of patents, have you seen the time? Oh god, it's Rant 30. It is Rant 30! Finally. Apple is so angry at Samsung again. <laughs> Samsung, of course, the Galaxy S4 is the fastest selling Android phone ever. They've moved 10 million units in four weeks. That thing is selling like crazy. I'm waiting for, uh, what are you waiting on? I'm, not, I'm, I'm waiting on the Nexus 5. Yeah, I'm going to wait and see how that does as well. I, I get the Galaxy S3 and the between the Samsung bloatware and the lack of updates from Verizon, I'm done with non-Google phones. Yeah, the bloatware is, is out of hand. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's not worth the headache anymore. We're just going to get Google phones and be done with it. It could just be Sprint. I don't even know. Yeah, but yeah, Google phones are the way to go. I've got it on Verizon, and it's got all kinds of Verizon crap on there, too. The, every time I use the voicemail, it berates me about getting visual voicemail, and it's like, wow, that's really crappy of you, Verizon. So these Samsung phones are selling way faster than the Apple phones currently are, and Apple, instead of innovating and instead of doing something on their own, they've gone back to their old, old tricks and they've decided to bring a number of patent complaints and lawsuits against Samsung to try to stop the sale of the Galaxy S4. The, um, the stuff that they're talking about, they're, they're, they're patents from like 10 years ago, and let me just read a couple of them. Universal Interface for Retrieval of Information in a Computer System. That's one of them they've named. Asynchronous Data Synchronization Amongst Devices. Wow, that doesn't sound generic at all. That's extremely generic. How about this one for generic? Graphical user interface using historical lists with field classes. Um, no. Based upon that, they could shut down half of the internet. Yeah, pretty like, much. Really, they could shut down pretty much our website. <laughs> Falls <laughs> into that patent. You go to Google and you start typing stuff and it brings up your previous searches. Eh, denied. System and method for performing an action on a structure in computer-generated data. What the hell does that mean? That is so vague and broad. Well, in fairness, we would actually need to look at the, the specific claims in these patents in order to make a determination. We're not going to bore you with that. We've done it, and suffice it to say, it's just sad. Apple, you know something? I'm going to say something right now, and all the Apple fans are going to get upset, but I think a lot of the Apple fans, especially the ones that are starting to wake up from their Apple stupor, are going to agree with this. Apple lost their heart when Steve Jobs died. Now they're losing their soul. And I think what they need to be doing right now is they need to be running around India looking for, you know, traveling hippies without shoes on that know something about technology because that's what they need. They need another young guy that they can bring back, put a suit on, tell him to get a haircut, let him sit in the room all day, fornicate, smoke weed, and come up with ideas for products because that's what Apple products are all about, smoking weed and fornication. <laughs> <laughs> We just lost so many subscribers. Oh, no, we didn't. No, no one didn't. subscribes. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that what fueled Apple's genius back in the day? Their innovation, their, their ability to take all these different elements and ingredients and make a new recipe that was delicious? Well, and, and you see, you know, the, the magic formula here is that these companies want a unified platform. And they're all beating around the bush, as usual, but no one is getting it right. It's like, oh, you know, Microsoft's doing the whole new Xbox thing, and... It's like, we want to be in the living room and on the desktop and on your tablet and blah, blah, blah. And people really do want that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the the uh, Xbox thing. We've got, we got a segment of that. And everyone, everyone email. That's my number one email this week is, hey, man, talk about the Xbox. So we'll do that in a second. But go back to your point. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's, it's just that that um, they're all sort of beating around the bush and doing it wrong. And that's, that was the tablet. You know, there were tablets before the iPad, but they're all beating around the bush sure and doing it wrong. Not. <laughs> <laughs> And then Jobs was like, oh, let's make a tablet that's not stupid. And then, ta-da, the iPad. And the iPad really wasn't stupid. I mean, it was a good product. If you're one of the viewers of this that has not seen our Did Apple Invent Anything video, there's a link on the bottom of the screen. You should check that out. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Let's talk about patent trolls for just one moment. Something interesting has happened, a groundbreaking case in Vermont. There's a lot of stuff about Vermont, guys. I, I really like in Vermont lately. But uh, the state attorney in Vermont has decided to sue a patent troll. Well, they, the, the patent troll actually has a bunch of different names because they incorporated dozens, if not multiple dozens of companies. To all shell companies. All shell companies to mm -hmm. sue people, sue companies that use copiers, that allegedly use copiers to send email. 
but they literally just spammed people. Actually, the, the list actually came from like best places to work for and things like that. It's like they open up, you know, a magazine's like, oh, best places to work for in Vermont and then just send everybody a letter in that list. Yeah. And, and they, they were demanding uh, like $1,000, $1,000 to $1,200 per employee just so they could use like this scanning and emailing technology that they said they had a patent that they said they had a patent on. MPHJ Technology is one of the um, the companies, the shell companies that was named in this. The state attorney in Vermont decided he wasn't going to take it anymore because this company was attacking lots of small businesses and making it very difficult for them to do business. Vermont has a ton of small businesses and a ton of nonprofit businesses, so he stepped in and said, "You know what? This uh, is violating their rights, and I'm going to sue this company." So that's pretty crazy. He's also named a specific lawyer in Texas who appears to be behind most of these. And a lot of these patent trolls really are just a bunch of stupid lawyers in a room who think they're going to make a gazillion dollars by creating a bunch of fake, com you know, fake companies and, and you well, know, signing the, documents with the name Alan Cooper. The, <laughs> yeah, that happened with Prenda. Yeah. The, the problem is that um, the lawyers tend to be scrutinized when they're acting out of their own interests. And so dollars to donuts, this copier situation, you're going to find out that lawyers are involved, like lawyers have ownership. And they're pretending not to act, you know, upon their own well, interests. This, this is our client. They hired us to do this. We're totally not just being paid commission and doing it for free. Yeah. So that's what's going on with most of these things. And the other thing that's very interesting is Vermont is about to sign into law. The only thing left to do is the, gov the governor of the state needs to sign it, and he's going to. Uh, they're, they're signing into law a new thing that would essentially make uh, bad faith assertions of patent infringement illegal and punishable. Now, here's what that means. If someone comes in there and they do not have extraordinarily explicit uh, details about their patent, because most of the patent trolls give very vague things and they want money immediately. So the Vermont law says it has to be specific and it has to give a reasonable amount of time uh, to repay. And that would cut out a lot of the patent troll cases. And it's gonna be, there's going to be heavy fines if a patent troll goes to court with all this nonsense and is found to be guilty or is found to be... Um, uh, you know, guilty of a bad faith assertion of a patent infringement. I see the downside to this being that small inventors will have more of a problem because companies will be, you know, fighting against it or whatever. That's one problem. And the problem uh, specifically for Vermont is the fact that this may go against federal law and then we have a constitutional case on our hands. Google Plus silently rolled out a, a visual item recognition thing uh, and that's going to be in uh, just all over Google+. Plus. Have you seen this? Yeah. It, it allows like... you to search for just about anything. You, you type in the word snake, it'll bring up all the pictures that contain a snake. You do not have to have snake in the meta. You do not have to have snake in the title. It looks at your actual picture and finds, oh, that looks like a snake to me. I would like to remind you that they hired Ray Kurzweil, if you remember, the AI pioneer. This is why. Type in the word jewelry, and there's a ring. There's another company, um, let's see if I can bring up that article. Yes, it is. Lambda Labs. They are launching a facial recognition API for Google Glass. And this means that all of the programs on Google Glass could take advantage of facial recognition. You could walk around, look at someone. It could bring up their profile on Google+, Plus, tell you a little bit about them. This may be invasive, and I'm not sure what's going to come of it. Executives will love it. Yeah. They could walk around like, Steve, how are you? How are those kids doing? Blah, blah, blah. How are those... Four kids. Oh, I see that you went to the park last week in this photo here. There was a snake. Having worked on more than a few customer relations uh, relationship management systems, being able to know all of that information about customers, it does lead to sales. A lot of sales. That companies are willing to pay developers a lot of money to develop. I think this is going to happen. I think they're going to find a way to make this happen. And I, think, and I think a lot of the people who are screaming privacy are going to get bulldozed, and I think this is going to happen. That's my prediction. Stuff like this is going to become the new norm, and we're going to have to accept it, or we can live in the middle of the woods somewhere. Yeah, pretty That's much. what I think is going to happen. And I think it's going to become so normal that if you do not accept it, you will be an outcast. <laughs> well, certainly anytime you have to interact with a physical salesperson, you're going to go into a database somewhere. I'm going to go back to Apple for just a second, because I'm actually going to say something interesting about Apple, maybe, maybe possibly good. But right now, they're kind of on the hook for tax evasion. And they're using loopholes. They are using so many different loopholes uh, to avoid taxes. In Ireland, they've pretty much been there since the 80s and not really paid much tax at all. In America, they avoid billions of dollars worth of taxes. And they do it using legal loopholes most of the time. So, but right now, they're, they're doing some questioning, and everyone's yelling and screaming about this. Um, Wendell, you want to address this from a Google standpoint? Well, okay. So Google... You know, uh, I think it was um, 
Eric Schmidt was at a conference and they were like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Google or Larry does, Page, I forget which one. W- 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 one of the Google executives said, look, yeah, we are using the tax code to our full advantage. We employ a team of experts who pour over the, the tax code and look for any avenue available to us to reduce our taxes. This is why those things are in the tax code. If they're, they're not, if we're not supposed to take advantage of them, why are they there in the tax code? It was very shameless, but it was very upfront and very honest. He was also extraordinarily blunt about the fact that he's like, hey, listen, we are a capitalistic company. Very explicit. The problem with Apple is that they're all like, oh, no, uh, oh, you flies down, run, you know, like. So <laughs> that that is, people look at that and they're like, oh, no, something must be going on there. When Google's like, yeah, we did do that because it's allowed. Yeah. Come Apple's, at me, bro. <laughs> Apple's definitely taking a lot of heat, you know, versus Google on the whole tax evasion thing. But Google's been honest and upfront about their tax situation. And Apple's, you know, been accused of having, you know, a web of companies set up for, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they get all the, you know, loopholes. Even if it's legal to have this, you know, web of companies set up based upon the tax code. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Let's talk about hardware. We've got Haswell and the GTX 780 coming out at just about the same time like they planned it. So uh, we've got some Haswell motherboards laying around. One over there on the floor. It's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody get that? I hope so. The GTX 780 review is out there. A non-tech put up a review. I've got some numbers here on the screen. I have said before, it's going to be almost as fast as the Titan for about two-thirds the price to a half the price. And look at this. It's about the same speed, three to four frames per second slower. I want to make note of something, guys, because do not be misled. They tested Crisis 3 at 2560 by 1440 and at 1080p. And the numbers were almost the same, but when you look at the details, one is running at high quality, the other one is running at very high quality. Someone emailed me and they're like, hey man, how the hell is it almost the same speed? It's like one frame per second uh, faster at 1440p. And I was like, the quality is different. That's kind of misleading. Why wouldn't they test it at all the different resolutions at the same quality? Oh, we tested it at the high quality, but there wasn't enough texture memory. So we didn't even report that? I'm scrolling through here just making sure that I'm not missing something here. They'll probably uh, uh, amend it between now and the time that we actually uh, go live. Okay, well, if they haven't... No, it's not on here right now. But if they do amend it, then com- then I commend your amendment. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. AMD has some new APUs coming out. Well, in the future. But right now, I'm going to talk about um, their future as far as the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. The technology that went into that, they say, is going to be available for laptops and desktops of the future. And it's going to make the performance per watt way better. It's also going to be a lot faster. The architecture that they developed for those consoles is is pretty cool. I wonder if we'll see laptops that have, um, you know, 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 as their system memory. On board, like like That'd be awesome. Soldered in there? Yeah. Well, the soldering part wouldn't be awesome, but 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 would be. Yeah. I don't think so. (laughs) You know why they call it Xbox One? Why? Because 720 is one. Cosine of 720 is one. I I didn't even get that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they were going to call it Xbox 720. Well, I've got another double entendre. I don't want one. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want one either. (laughs) Oh, more... um... Uh, you know, I like the uh, benchmarks here on hard OCP, so go check those out. Those are pretty legit as well. It looks like the 7970 is still faster. I, I just switched back because the articles were in the wrong spot. Back to 780. So more benchmarks there. We don't have one. <laughs> we may just buy one. I went to buy one. I asked a few people for them. I'm like, yo, let me ask you. You got any, like, 780 samples laying around the flow? Let me ask you if you could send some. We'll be ordering ours directly from China. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Or get on Alibaba later. That's exactly what we're going to do. It's not a bad idea. You can get like 70 of them, put the nice Burning Earth logo on there. Before we do that, we've got a um, tricorder. Real life tricorder is, is going to be on the market soon. It reads your vital signs. It's about the size of a double stuffed Oreo. Tricorder, the name, is explicitly set up for people that invent the tricorder to be able to use. Like Roddenberry set that up in his agreements with Paramount. But I don't think they're going to use the name tricorder, which is funny. It's going to be called the Scanadu Scout. Oh. Yeah. It doesn't look like quite the same thing as a tricorder. I'm surprised that J.J. Abrams hasn't renamed the tricorder to be something else because that's how much he cares about Star Trek canon (laughs) or the franchise or 
It's just so terrible. It's just so terrible. Oh, God. I mean, the guy that was in the movie, that the movie was about, like, there was no, in this universe, oh, there's Khan? no backstory. They, yeah, well, I mean. Everybody here knows it's Khan. It's been like the headline of everything. Khan is back. Yeah, okay, so there there was not, there has not in this timeline been the backstory between Kirk and Khan, so. But they they played it up like there was still an emotional connection or something, or? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that was, and they got a lot of things wrong. Like they said that he was floating around space for 300 years, but it's 2269. And then you know, so JJ, that was not nearly enough time. Yeah, JJ Abrams on the on the text on the screen was like, "Start date twenty two sixty nine is like, uh, that's not a start date." And then the alarm clock was like five <laughs> o'clock a.m. and it was like start date something 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 point five and point. They just throw a bunch of numbers on there because they're like, oh, numbers are nerdy. Just put a bunch of numbers in there. It's like those sci-fi shows you see, you know, like three in the morning on the sci-fi channel where there's just a bunch of guys in a room going, "Captain, set coordinates to two seven eight point nine or." And then like the other guy goes, "I, Captain, we're getting a distress call from quadrant seven eight seven eight seven eight seven eight. I just like to throw a bunch of numbers in there because it sounds like, oh yeah, that's scientific, yeah. It's my understanding that that even if the even if the star date were twenty two fifty nine point five, that the point five means high noon because you know before the decimal point. Yeah, mid- midday. Yeah, but it, like the scene was the guy had just turned off his alarm clock that went off at five o'clock in the morning in London, which should be Greenwich Mean Time. So <laughs> this was very upsetting. <laughs> no, that was not the most upsetting thing, but you know. That's just one of the little things. Where it's like, I'm going to make a movie and then just take my, my kindergarten glue and paste Star Trek <laughs> onto the movie. And ta-da, I'm done. My name's J.J. Abrams. Thank you very much. Speaking of Star Trek technology, how about charging your cell phone in 20 seconds? Super capacitors. Yes, a teen invented. She, she won like $50,000 uh, for this. From California, developed a um, super fast charging super capacitor. Charges in 20 to 30 seconds. That's insane. Well, the line, but mo- with modern technology, the line between batteries and capacitors is blurring. The only reason we don't use capacitors as battery is because their current leaks out. And so, like, if you leave a super capacitor alone for an hour, it'll, it'll just have it'll discharged drain. on its own. Mm-hmm. Whereas with a battery, you know, it'll keep its charge. Gaming. Talk about gaming. We're going to start talking about the Xbox. First thing I want to do is just say that uh, this whole nonsense about not being able to sell used games on Xbox, that's not correct. John Hicks, he's one of the um, editors from. Xbox Magazine UK. He posted one tweet that settles everything. On secondhand games, you buy disc, it installs, you play from HD, that's hard drive. Sell disc, it installs to new console and deactivates your install. End of story. So that'll take care of all that. That's less insidious than Steam's ERM because you can't really, you know, give your game to someone else and then have it deactivate your game. You can make trades though. So there's that. Let's talk about what I really want to talk about, and that's the Connects mandatory always on listening to you, and you cannot disconnect it. No, Dave. <laughs> that was a snafu during their press conference. They kept saying Xbox too much, and it was like, what? What do you want me to do? What? What? You keep <laughs> saying is. Xbox. Stop it. It it listens to everything you do. And it ships with the Connect, A yeah. new, more high-definition Connect that can tell you exactly how fat you are. Really? It can do that? Yeah, that's what the, the thing was. It was like we were able to distinguish individual fingers from across the room now or something. I really think that this technology is going to be used for future DRM models. And I mean that not just for the Xbox, but for future platforms, um, future consoles, future television sets. I think a lot of them are going to have something like the Kinect built in so they can watch what you're doing and then say, hey, there's like five people in the room. It'll stop playback and say, give us some more money, please, because there's five people watching this. And you only have license for two people to watch this content. The National Football League is all about they that. They love it. They are already doing that. Yeah. So they, they don't want like multiple people getting together and watching, you know, whatever football game it is. I don't understand why. It's an unlicensed performance of the football game. But they're still delivering their ad content to a lot of different people. They just can't count it as well. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It just counts as one view instead of five views. That's why can't why they I... just say, like, hey, it's estimated that five people watch the Super Bowl together at any one given place? I don't even care. <laughs> If you guys are wondering what to play, here's Pistol to tell you exactly what to play. This week's recommendation is Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 is an open world FPS with RPG elements made by Ubisoft. The story setting of this game is that you're on vacation with friends, they get kidnapped, you have to find them and escape. I don't want to give too much, I don't want to spoil it. One of the first things that you'll notice in this game is that the voice acting and dialogue in this game really helps set the atmosphere. Well, I hope your mama and your papa really, really love you. Because you two white boys, you look very expensive. And that's good because I like expensive things. I'm sorry, what did you say? 
What did you say? Did you want me to slice you open like I did your friend? The world in Far Cry 3 is very large and detailed and the graphics are really, really good and will push your system. One of the RPG elements is that you can unlock and upgrade weapons and you can use sniper rifles or RPGs, pistols. You can use whatever weapon that suits your playstyle. If you can sneak, go in guns blazing, it's your choice. And one of the reasons why I would prefer this game over other modern FPSs is that it's open world and it doesn't hold your hand. You can decide to go do one thing, you can do a mission, you can go hunt animals to upgrade your items. You know, you're not forced to do anything or walk down a straight hallway, so to speak. And one of the big pluses about this game being open world and you can kind of just do whatever is that there's a lot of non-scripted events that happen all around you at any point. You don't know when they're going to happen. Completely non-scripted, purely AI based, and some of these events are pretty hilarious. He's just standing there, screaming. Holy shit! <laughs> and it hit the leopard and saved his life. <laughs> oh, it's stuff like that why I love this game. So if you're looking for an FPS that's open world, a little bit more sandbox feeling, then Far Cry 3 is definitely the game you want to go for. So that's it. Hope you guys feel fulfilled. We had our um, Rant 30 this week. It's a big deal. We haven't had one of those for a while, but you know, when Apple's up to their uh, mischief, it's time to do a Rant 30. Subscribe, it's down there. All the uh, links to the video game deals, like, you know, Far Cry right now is half price, and, you know, she did that. We didn't coordinate this, she just wanted to do it, and then I noticed, hey, it's half price with our affiliate link, so it's all down there in the description. So check it all out, I'll see you guys on the forum. That is amazing. Yahoo bought Term Timberler. <laughs> Timberler. Yeah, yeah. He's also named a specific. I can't. Why can't I say that word? Specific. Specific. Pretty Satan.